Howdy folks, Kirk and Jason here with Kirk Giordano Plastering. Today, I want to show you guys some window work and how and where to stop. Um, like this fella here, he had a really, really hard time, really hard time finding window installers that wouldn't butcher the place. I should name this Window Butchers because Jay and I for the last, this year seems to be so many windows that are put in improperly by professionals. I want to go over that later on. But we are in beautiful, freezing, frigid San Francisco. Remember what Mark Twain said? The coldest day or the coldest day I ever spent was the summer in San Francisco. It's true. Or maybe Mayor Alioto said that, but whatever, whoever said it, it's cold. Anyway, what we're going to do is the fellow here wasn't sure where to stop and he had the window fellow out here like three times. Uh, trying to get this right and every time I would come and say no, that's not right. You got to put your flashing It can't go on the inside of the frame. It's got to go on the outside So you put your window flashing guys and this is for anybody homeowners install You put your window flashing one on the bottom under the sill on top of the sill Then two going up the sides then you install your window. They can't go on the inside unless you're using straight flash That's okay. But that's another story anyway he got beat up so so many times and the window guys had to come and you can look at this if i'm a window guy i don't want to come two three times and install a window anyway i'm gonna go over that more in detail jay's going to come up here and i'm going to show you guys where to start and where to stop in explorations because if i put this together back together as is we may have some moisture uh intrusion and he's already been through this it's 30 years now so we're going to fix it once and for all right now Okay guys, we'll show you a close-up of what we're going to do because you might have this issue. A lot of people do and what we're doing is no fun, but it's got to be done. Okay, again, I'll, I'll repeat, the guys who used a hammer here destroyed everything and had to come back and redo everything. And that's a lot of nails they put in here, like 40. So what they did the second time around is th they put this... Uh, Paper flashing, and that's you can use uh, paper flashing. It's got fibers in it. You put your first piece, then the two sides, then you install your window. They didn't do that. They put it inside the window frame so there was nothing coming out. You cannot do that. And Jay and I have had at least this year alone in the last six months about eight different contractors do it. And we had to go there. We said, guys, you need, you need to flash these windows properly. Otherwise, it'll leak. It's like a jar. If you don't have a seal, it's going to leak. So we had to decline a lot of stuff. Word to window installers, if you're watching this video and you know how to do a window well, where you put your paper on the bottom, your sill, and then you go up and you break out with these guys here, uh, where it uses skill rather than muscle, leave your phone number and who you are, your company name, in the description or the comments and I'll place it in the description for other folks who are located in other cities than us because it is extremely difficult these days it seems to get a good window installer again you just leave your paper and wire and you break it out with uh, pneumatic tools or rotor hammers so anyway let me get back to what we're doing here it's uh, it might seem complicated to everybody else but for us it's it's really simple Jason on the phone got the hardest or on the camera got the hardest job because he's gonna break out uh, I hate breaking out anyway here's let me show you here and then I'm gonna show you see this flashing right here I might as well get this over with this flashing right here it's called roof to wall flashing and this flashing goes out here four inches and then it goes up four inches now in order to waterproof this I look right here and the paper is disintegrated. A lot of times the paper will be disintegrated. I've seen buildings that have um, <laughs> no paper, no wood. The only thing holding that stucco up in, in these garages is just the stucco. So with your papers deteriorated on a roof, that's a big deal because water is going to go inside your living room. If the paper is deteriorated and the wood on a garage, big deal. Um, I mean, unless that garage is connected to your house. But Jay and I was pushing on one, the homeowner said, what are you guys doing? I said, I'm seeing how strong this is because it's just stucco. There's no wood left. Paper does deteriorate, guys. Everything deteriorates. We deteriorate. It's called old age. Anyhow, so what we're going to do today is, uh, after we're done 
with this talk, we're going to chip all of this out right there and go straight up. Hopefully that'll, that'll eliminate this right here where the paper is disintegrated and just, it's old. So for me, if I was to try to fish paper in here, I'd be taking advantage of somebody or doing a, a, an injustice. My job is to do it right. And by the way, guys, while we're on it, see this right here. If you have a window next to a window, cut this right here, cut this right here, and just take this piece off because to waterproof this to here, it's too much work. Just remove it and fix it. I'll show you one more thing, guys. I know this is uh, getting into detail, but I'll show you what the guys did. Okay, the, they had a, this craft paper. Now, they had the craft paper on the inside. Well, the flange... These have a flange on them. They're one-inch flange, two-inch flange. You're supposed to put that flashing, and preferably it should be six inches if you got it, like about this, six-inch flange. So you put the flange or the peeling stick under right here, then the window goes on top of it. So these guys who put it on the sides inside, they had to come back. They had to remove these windows. That's, that's a monster job. It took two guys... 16 hours to take these windows out and flash it properly. That's why I say if you guys are good window companies, put your name and description in, in, the, in the comments so people can call you guys because it's hard to find good, or it seems to be difficult these days to find good window flashers. They're window butchers. Anyway, so what we can do two things. Generally, if now the, <coughs> the homeowner, he says, man, I'm not taking any chances, Kirk. I'm going to put this peel and stick over everything. I said, good job, good job. So what we would do if this peeling stick wasn't here, what we're going to do now is we're going to go underneath this flashing here and on top of this paper. And once we're on top of this paper, that's the proper way to do it. The, the new paper goes on here, under here, and then this goes down. We'll show you that when we get to that stage. But first, we've got to break this out. We're going to break it out to here, here. We might even have to go all the way down to the bottom. Hope not, but... We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Anyhow, we'll see you in a minute. Okay, guys, we are at a stage where all that nasty stuff is pulled off. Oh, I hate doing that stuff, so Jay did it. Anyway, the homeowner, he was just leaving. He says, Kirk, can I count on you to do a good job? I thought, man, that's funny. You can depend on us to do a good job. At this stage here, this allows me to see what the heck is going on. So I'm looking at it. And that shows me that this wood is in excellent condition. Otherwise, you would see these nails rusting. Rust black would be coming down everywhere where there's a stud. There are no rust marks there. So he was right. He said, I think the windows are leaking. So he's been dealing with it for many years. He changed the windows. That fixed the problem. So what we're going to do is uh, put this back together. I'm even going to show you that because... I got to do it anyway. Now, keep in mind here too, God, I was expecting to have to reflash this flashing, but this flashing is in excellent condition. Many guys will put a peel and stick here. You can't do that, guys. This flashing is probably 80, 90 years old, and it's still in perfect condition because it's flashing. It's 17 gauge. You can use tin on top of this, but we don't need to do that because um, we're good. Now, this stucco here is inch and a half. Why? Because somebody, the original stucco was pressure washed, primered, or a bonding agent, and another coat was put on it. There are two coats here. I'll show you something. There's uh, a number of coats here. You see that? It's, uh, they got another coat half inch of stucco. Some places it's an eighth of an inch. Some places, like where I see right there, it's about an inch and a half. So if I put a weep screed right here, you know what it'll do? <laughs> Take a guess. Absolutely nothing because you already, we already have this metal. And when these guys come, they will take their new torch down and they'll torch it to this metal right here. So we don't need a weep screed. It'd be a waste of time and useless anyhow. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and repaper it because the paper that's there has seen better days. So what we do is we go under both of these, the original flashing and this uh, DuPont. 
and we just simply cut it out. And what we want to do is cut it out right at the bottom. That way we're overlapping. They're flashing by um, four inches. We overlap by four inches. Water won't go back up. And you see, guys, that's, that's how you do it. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to show you a little bit more because I can, and i got to do it anyhow. So we're going to take this new paper and go under the existing slam. Okay, I just cut some pieces out to prove a point, guys. And guys, if you're going to do this, uh, ladies, guys, whoever's doing it, homeowners, uh, two layers of grade D, that's code. So two layers of grade D. Ah, out of staples. Pull that guy, put one, one row in. Blam. The other row. Okay, now we get back to what we were doing. And again, we want, uh, we want to cut it right at the bottom where when the the roofers get here, they can just simply remove this torch down and put the next torch down and it'll stick to this metal by fire. That's called a torch down. Okay, this guy here, I don't need it, but I'm just gonna get it out the way. That's what I'm gonna do with it. Okay, two more layers. One, two guys, you gotta have two. I'll even show you what we're using right there. All right, so we are going to finish paper in this and what I want to do is, because we have uh, an inspection, we want to make sure that the fellas know what we're doing. And guys, do you need an inspection if you change your windows? Yes and no. If you change the headers, yes. Do they need an inspection on this? No. They put in the same windows, so you don't need a permit for this. But some folks don't know that. That's why I'm pointing it out. We're good here. Cut it here, cut this little flange out, tuck this guy underneath, the same applies here. Cut this little flange out, tuck it underneath, and tack it down. Now what I'm going to do, guys, is not bore the heck out of you and show you the whole thing. We're going to take it, and when we get up here, this is more of a, a, simple, a simple thing right here, guys. I'm going to take my new paper, and we're going to lift this existing paper. It's in great condition. And we're going to go under here as far as we can. Eventually, it will hit a, a nail, a staple, something. But we go as far up under there as we can. So I'm going to go ahead and paper this, and I'll show you how we wire it too. All right, guys. We went ahead and put the wire on. And the wire we're using is uh, stucco netting. It's 17 or 18 gauge wire works also. And you don't need furry nails. You can use your gun and put staples in it. That's why it's self wire because you don't need to fur it with nails. Anyhow, uh, again, any of you uh, in window installers, place your information in the comments and I'll take some of the better ones and put it in the description to throw you guys a bone. If you could, if you, if you are guys who don't saw cut windows and just leave them, that way the folks who uh, are interested in your services can call you. You might say, well, who are you to ask that? Well, Jay and I have been doing these videos for about well, well over 10 years, we have close to 50 million views. That's a lot of zeros. Um, I personally responded and answered over 40,000 comments. And a lot of you might say, well, you don't have a life. Maybe so. But anyway, when we go to plaster this, probably in a couple of days, we'll show you the plaster and how to do it too because we're going to be using a chem set. Chem set uh, doesn't have lye in it or silica. And that's the stuff that burns your hands. That's why we always wear gloves. You always see my pants. You'll see knee holes in the knees because the lye in stucco burns all the clothes. It's kind of like a battery. You ever have a battery explode on your face? It's the same thing. The next day you got holes in your clothes. But the plaster we're going to use here is lye free. And you guys, uh, I, I mention it because it's a great product. And that, give me a minute. <laughs> 
Yeah. Uh, okay. <clears throat> I mention it because it is a great product. And the typical cement that we put on, guys, all the plasters inside, all the stuccos outside have lye. And how does that affect you guys? It doesn't. It affects us. If we breathe it, we end up with uh, bad stuff in our lungs. Uh, the little girl and playing around with plaster of Paris in Britain had to have eight fingers amputated, putting it in plaster of Paris. It's the lie that's in a lot of the chemicals we use or the stuccos are no joke. So if you're watching up to this point, <laughs> man, you're a subscriber, then... Look in the description. We're going to put that video of how to plaster this in that, and I'll be using that chem set. We thank you for watching this one, guys. And as usual, we'll see you guys on the next one. All right, folks, we've reached the end of another video. As always, we thank you for watching. If you enjoy what we're putting out for you guys, please like and subscribe to keep supporting us. And as usual, from the entire Giordano family, we'll, we'll see, see you on the next one. one.